Hi guys and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about Virginie Fernandez, born on 15th of November 1976, known by her stage name Virginie Ledoyen, is a French actress who has appeared in French, British and American films. Ledoyen was born in Albert Villers, the daughter of Olga, a restaurant restaurateur and Bernard Fernandez, a merchant who sold cleaning product, products and knives. Her paternal grandfather was Spanish. She was a print model from the age of two and later took on the stage name Ledoyen after the maiden name of her maternal grandmother who was a stage actress. Ledoyen's film breakthrough came with a single girl in 1995 stylized La Fille Soyul, for which she was nominated for a Caesar Award for Most Promising Actress. She also received two Caesar Award nominations for Les Marmots in 1993 and Le Freud in 1994. Outside France, her best-known role is in The Beach from the 2000 movie. In the fall of 2000, she signed a contract as a spokesmodel with the cosmetic company L'Oreal. She was featured alongside two models, Leticia Casta and Noemi Lenoir. She portrayed the character Cosette in the 2000 French television miniseries of Les Miserables. And on 29th of September 2001, Leroyen gave birth to her first child, a girl named Lila, with production designer Louis Sobrier, whom she met on the set of La Fille Suelle in 95. She was in a short-lived marriage with Elaine Rogers, a film director from 2006 to 2007. From 2007 to 2015, she was in relationship with actor Ari Elmale, whose brother was her core star in The Valet. Ledoyen and Elmale have a son, Isaac, born in July 2010, and a daughter, Amalia, born in April 2014. In 2013, Leroyen was named as a member of the jury at the 17th Venice International Film Festival. In 2002, Virginie Leroyen, the face of L'Oreal and star of Eight Women, tells Xan Brooks in an interview for The Guardian why she keeps saying no to Hollywood and why she wouldn't wish DiCaprio's life on anybody. Virginia Delian operates on Movie Star Time, a bizarre parallel body clock which runs both quicker and slower than the world at large. Age 2, she was already earning her rusk as a child model. She was acting in films at 9 and a bona fide Hollywood star courtesy of the beach by her early 20s. Now 26, then when the article was issued, she's both a working mom and the official face of L'Oreal all of which might suggest a life led way ahead of schedule, except that our interview is booked for 3 p.m. in a hotel bar near her Paris apartment and naturally she is running late. In terms of career, if nothing else, Ledoyen has already arrived. Her place in the lineup of eight women effectively anoints her as a member of the French acting aristocracy. There she stands resplendent in Barbie pink alongside the likes of Catherine Deneuve, Isabelle Huppert, Fanny Ardant and Emmanuel Baird, a plucky princess in a court full of queens. At this year's Berlin Film Festival, the entire cast walked home with the Silver Bear Award for Outstanding Artistic Achievement. The work of maverick talent Francois Ozone, Eight Women mounts an eye-catching makeover of a forgotten stage who done it. It's an acid little confection, part murder mystery, part musical, part catwalk parade, loaded with enchanting dance routines and vicious infighting. Ledoyen plays the fresh-faced daughter of the house who returns home from her studies to find daddy dead. Her arrival sets off a chain reaction as a bunch of skeletons come tumbling from the family closet. Color-coded and designed to within an inch of other of their lives, Ozone's eight women can be viewed as pieces on a cluedo board, except the director says he envisaged his film more as a dose house, each inhabitant emblematic of a particular facet of French glamour and femininity. The new screen image makes her ideal 
as the household Reiko matriarch, for instance, while Hubert radiates an icy intensity as her spinster sister. One rung down, you find Vampish Ardant as a scarlet woman, Beard Cooley Carno in her chambermaid's outfit, and Ludivine Sagnier as the embodiment of tomboyish childhood mischief. And how does Lidoyen fit into this dollhouse? What facet does she represent? Virginie is the classic ingenue heroine. Ozone explains she looks very pretty, natural, and simple, but underneath she's more per perverse than you can imagine. There's a sadistic side to her character. I suspect he's referring to Ledoyen's screen image as opposed to her actual personality, but with Ozone's it's hard to know for sure. In the end, Ledoyen is merely fashionably late. A slip of a girl in studious tortoise show specs, she doesn't strike one as an obvious sadist. Nursing a mineral water, arranging herself on the sofa, she confesses to deep misgivings before embarking on Ozone's film. The thought of eight women in a room together made me very depressed. There is a recipe for trouble even when they are not actresses. So what are eight actresses going to be like? What was she expecting? The roar of clashing egos, catfights over the makeup kit, exactly, she exclaims, she exclaims reaching for the water. Little Yen, it transpires, we say exactly a great deal during the course of the interview. It's her way of diffusing an observation of rubber stamping it without actually adding anything of her own. Giving her whirlwind success, you would assume that she was always driven to act, yet Little Yen insists that this was not the case. She says that she treated her career as a child model as a game of make-believe and intended to be a lawyer when she grew up. It was only in her late teens that she committed to a life of star stardom, quitting school, leaving home and taking an apartment of her own. She regards her role as a schoolgirl delinquent in Oliver Asayas' acclaimed Cold Water as the breakthrough performance to one that gave her confidence. She went on to work with Asayas again on late August, early September, to crop up in cloud chabrols, La Ceremonie, and to start as a crunchy shoplifter in Pierre Jolivet's and Plain Coyer before long her acting grace and vivid continental beauty were catching Hollywood's eye. In 1999, Fox cast her opposite Leonardo DiCaprio in its big budgeted adaptation of The Beach. In the event, The Beach was to provide the one stardom in a career of blissful plane sailing, the protracted shoot in Thailand was a catalogue of misfortune. Eco-protesters picketed the set, a hurricane dumped DiCaprio into the sea, and an extra was stung by a flying scorpion and spent two days in a coma. Yeah, there were a few problems, Leroyen says roughly, but the actual filming wasn't as exhausting or unpleasant as all the other stuff that went along with it. By this she means the seemingly endless publi publicity tour to promote the movie and the fever tabloid attention that came to dog her every move. At one stage it was confidently reported that she was pregnant with DiCaprio's love child. The whole thing was really aggressive. I guess I was very naive but the violence of the attention took my breath away. I tried to laugh it off because if you don't laugh you start crying and then you never stop. Such, though, are the perils of signing up to a studio blockbuster with an actor of such glaring star wattage and attendant celebrity baggage. DiCaprio's life is the perfect example of how not to be, she says. I would not wish his life on anybody. I can understand how it might seem a bit flattering to be in every newspaper and to have everyone imagining how your life must be, but frankly it's not. When you see this poor guy being followed everywhere he goes by hordes of people is actually terribly sad. Nobody should live like that. The beach may have been fumbled as a film, but it certainly got her noticed. After its release, Little Yen was deluged with offers of further Hollywood work. She would wind up turning them all down f flat. I didn't receive any good propositions. She shrugs, I didn't want to go to Hollywood in order to play the French girl who always wants to be nude, 
I wanted to keep working in Europe and I would never accept a film because of the money. I have enough money, I don't need to be getting 20 million a movie. In other words, she doesn't hanker for a DiCaprio style paycheck. Exactly, she says. Leto Yen's decision has been vindicated by her work on Eight Women, already a hit of Amelie Lac proportions in France. In the meantime, her income is but to rest by lucrative sideline as the official face of L'Oreal. Over here, she's still better known for her L'Oreal contract than for her film Rose, Ozone tells me. So what exactly does it mean to be the face of L'Oreal? Leto Yen looks nonplussed. That's a very philosophical question, I can only tell you what it means to me personally. Go on then. Okay, well, it gives me the opportunity to make the movies that I want to do because L'Oreal pays me very well. Also, it means that I can work with great directors. My last commercial was directed by Eric Zonka, who made Dream Life of Angels, and finally, it doesn't take up a lot of my time. Still trying to pin down Little Yen's appeal, I read her quote from the L'Oreal press release. The company says that she was selected to personify the generation of 18 to 30 year olds. The actress shrugs, okay, well, why not? I guess that they mean that I'm not Cindy Crawford or Claudia Schiffer, I'm pretty normal looking, I hope that I'm not too far away from the rest of my generation, I think I can mingle well with girls of my own age, it just means that I'm accessible. In Ozone's view, Ledo Yen will eventually go on to become an actress of the standing of Denyov or Hopert, a symbol of something, a national institution. If I had to compare her to anyone, I would be to Denyov when she was young, he says. She's not like Hopert, who is a chameleon, a creature of the theater who totally changes with every role she takes. Virginie is more obviously iconic. Her acting is about how she uses a recognizable face and posture. In that way, she's like Catherine and how Catherine was at the time of Belle du Jour. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you've liked this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel and leave down a comment below. Bye!